Hey guys, I haven't had time to make a tutorial in a while, so sorry. Um, today I'm going to play with Illustrator and we're going to make really easy like geometric pattern type poster on it um, using just basic shapes, lines. Um, yeah, it's going to be cool. Okay, so we're going to open up a new, a new document. I'm going to name it Geometry. Um, under print, we're going to select the tabloid size okay and that's a really that's a nice poster size basically all right so we have this here we're gonna use the rectangle tool draw a rectangle that covers the entire canvas and color it in just so we can see what we're working with and then what we're gonna do is we take the line tool and we're going to create really interesting grid work, I guess you want to call it. Um, so what you do is you take the line tool, you hold down shift to make sure the line is drawn straight, and you drag it right across. We're going to do one this way, we're going to do one that way, one that way, and one that way. Alright, so those are the four types of lines we're going to do. And what you do is you click the direct select tool, hold down the alt key and taking that line you drag it along and then you've created another line see how you kind of create a really easy grid that way oh I don't know what I just did there but um, you're gonna continue doing that until you fill up the board I will be right back with my board filled up okay so I filled up my entire board like this now what you would do is you would take the direct select tool I've already done it here but you drag it across the entire canvas so every single line you drew is highlighted. You click on Window and make sure your Pathfinder tool, uh, Pathfinder toolbar is open. And under Pathfinder, we're going to click on Divide. What that does is it divides up that gray rectangle we drew across the entire canvas into these itty little bits that. Um, the lines all intersect in, and it chops it up. So if you took that and removed it, like. There, you take that little bit of the gray triangle off. Um, that in and of itself is a really cool technique, just FYI if you're making a poster. Um, using geometry, if you're measuring things out and strategically removing parts of something, it can create a really interesting pattern just by itself. But what we're going to do now is um, we're going to create, we're going to color these in and create our ge geometric kind of pattern here. So to do that, we are going to go to Cooler. I already have my pattern pulled up here, uh, my swatch pal palette, my palette. So cooler.adobe.com, um, open up your palette. Uh, if you are signed into your Adobe ID, you can download this and then just load it straight within Illustrator. Um, I haven't done that, so I'm not signed in. So what I did is I just copy pasted it. Um, I just like screenshotted it and just put it in here um, if you look let me show you what I did it's right there I just made it really tiny and then I drew these little squares here there's five of them for the five colors and I'm just gonna click on each color each little square use the eyedropper tool and just color it the the right color so we have a full palette um, you're gonna go do that and just keep that palette Okay, I'm not going to continue doing the rest of the palette. You get the point. Um, and then what you're going to do is you click on these pieces here. Um, you color them in using your palette. And you make it look cool. Uh, be artistic. Take your time. There's no rush. Um, these, you know, the color palette you've picked should all blend together really nicely. Um, I'm not going to continue doing that for the whole thing, but you would finish that up. Then what you can do is, once you've got all of that done, um, you can transport that to Photoshop and finish like adding gradients and adjustments and maybe some texture so it's not just nice. Because sometimes texture really adds that extra something, a little bit of graininess or um, variation to it so it doesn't look obviously digital. It gets uh, a really cool distressed vibe. Um, so you would go ahead and you would do that. Um, I will be right back. 
Okay, so I filled in some more colors just to show you what it can look like. I'm going to delete that because I also made the palette. Um, so you've got this like patchwork type effect going on already. And it's really interesting. Like this in and of itself, like if you blew it up, would be enough to make a poster. To show you what I mean, I'm going to select that little piece of it, copy it, and I'm going to open up Photoshop. I don't know what just popped up, but I'm going to create a new board. What is that? I don't want to participate. Um, create a new board. US paper, tabloid size, okay. Paste that bit in as a smart object. Um, let me zoom out here to show you. Gosh, please don't lag. So take it, make sure show transform tools is on, drag it open until it's like really big. Basically, um, just like that. Um, now, what I wanted to do is I wanted to give each individual shape some gradient, um, and that would be something you would do in Illustrator, not here. But since I wasn't able to do that, I wanted to show you how I did that. Um, Okay, so what you could do is you can always click on that object to edit it again in Illustrator. So once you've placed it in this cool shape, you would click it again. That'll open it in Illustrator just as an individual object that is editable. And whatever changes you make here will be reflected on the Photoshop file. Um, so let's, let's add some gradient and some variation here. Okay, so what we're going to do to create that gradient effect is we are going to duplicate the color layer just by clicking and dragging. Uh, no, not even. Just clicking the grid here and just duplicating it to make a copy of it. Now, make sure you're clicked on the copy. What I do is I just hide everything else in the meantime so I don't do anything on it by accident. So just on that grid copy, we're going to click on everything. We're going to go to Window, Gradient, and we're going to give it a black to white gradient. Isn't that cool? It's cool. Um, transparency, I'm going to change the screen, the, the, the mode, like the layer mode to screen or soft light. Now what that should do is, I don't know why it's not doing it right. It should have just affected that. Yeah, it did. Okay. But why you don't work <laughs> okay well let's try this again we have our gradient see illustrator is just guess and check for me as much as it is for you guys I'm gonna lower the opacity <gasps> did that do something yeah it did okay so I'm gonna highlight everything and I'm gonna lower the opacity of it and instead of normal I'm gonna set it to a different mode. You know, I wish this would just work better. Like, like you know what I'm trying to do? And it's just not cooperating with me. Did that do anything? Don't want normal. Experiment with different layer modes. Darken makes it too dark for my taste. Oh, I'm moving it. Um, lighten. Hell no. Nope. Oh, that's still too light. Alright, well, let's do that. And then let's just save it. Let's save it and just by Control S and open it in Photoshop. And you'll see it takes some time, it loads, and it should reflect that gradient change. Please work, please work, please work. <gasps> Yay! See, it did stuff. Not exactly what I wanted to do, but you get the gist of it. Um, what you could also do is you could just use, and this is what I should have done, to be honest. You know what? What another option is, is you take the wand 
the magic wand, uh, the quick selection tool, select these shapes individually, um, and just color, like, just add the gradients in on Photoshop. And since Photoshop is medium I'm more comfortable in, that's probably what I would do, to be honest. So I'd click on, like, okay, that's a really high tolerance. Click on the one bit. Make sure I'm on the vector object. So click on each object, right? And, well, let's just click on the ones I want to add a gradient to. So it's Click on the object, add the black and white gradient, and that'll be on a new layer. So, let's see what I'm doing. How am I not clicked on an object? Click on the object, the little, the shape, right, that you want to hide on, on the vector smart object. Click on that shape. Then what you have to do is you have to create a gradient, but to do the gradient, we're going to click on layer one which was just a copy we made, and drag the gradient across. And then we're going to put that on... Oh, so I guess it was doing it right on soft light, but we're going to put that on overlay, right? And we're going to go through and do that with every single shape, um, changing the direction of the gradient each time to give you some variation and interesting effects. Be right back. Okay, so I've went ahead and I lowered the opacity from 100 to 50%. It's still on overlay. If you take a look, it has a really um, subtle effect, but it does it does add something. Um, sorry, we're going to add some texture. You know, I keep alt-tabbing and then um, ending my record. So we're going to go to DeviantArt, and I'm going to go look up like something grainy. Very simple, grainy texture. Please come. Uh, we're gonna take the first one I see. I'm just gonna copy it. You could download it for the full quality version of it. But I just, I'm not, I'm just, I'm just not doing that. So I'm gonna take that, put it on, let's see, soft light. But what I'm gonna do is add a layer mask to it now which is the little, um, that little, like, I don't know what it is. It's like a folder looking, not folder, I don't know. It's a rectangle with a circle inside of it. I'm going to do that to add a layer mask. And then I'm going to take a really soft, big brush, right? So it's fluffy, big sized, like really big sized, because it's a big canvas, if you think about it. Do that, and I'm going to change it to black. And where I draw, it'll erase the effect, right? So I'm just going to tone it down um, in some areas and leave it pretty textured in others. Um, so where you draw in black, it gets rid of the texture. And if you want to change it, change your mind, you suddenly want it to be really textured, you just switch to using the white, and it adds that texture right back in. A lot of tutorials, uh, vintage and retro tutorials, will use that texture effect to distress the piece in the end and add a little bit more grunge to it. If I was finishing this piece right now, I would have definitely used a bigger portion of this thing. I probably would have done the whole thing and just made it really intricate. Um, I would also, you know, what would be also interesting is if I took that vector we have, duplicated it, and kind of moved it around at a lowered opacity, I, you know, just experiment, play with it, make a cool poster, have fun. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go and just, this is gonna cut out in 15 minutes, but I hope that helped. You can make business cards, you can make posters, so I can't help you with the painting, but posters, business cards, this would be a cool effect for. Um, you know, you could cut out parts of it and use the white space to put in your text for business cards or for posters. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm just going to wrap it up right now. I'm actually not going to use the full 15 minutes this time. I'm just going to talk uh, for like 20 seconds. Um, thanks for watching. This was made for Zombians. It was made for you, Sniper. <laughs> uh, I forget your actual name. You should, but uh, thank you. It's all because of you. If you ever have any more questions, let me know. 
and it's a wrap.